there you are um, this is a live video we can chat only if you're live with me right now if not this might a uh, recorded version so you cannot chat chatting is easy you have to make a um, account YouTube account it's free um, but you can comment you can like stuff and you can chat ask your questions and stuff hi guys how are you let me there put the other screen on <sighs> yes I'm doing neons today as I promised um, and also because uh, we hmm, I just wanted to say we remodeled our kitchen that's not true we put a part of a countertop in <laughs> and now the backsplash is um, I don't know the word we're doing the backsplash and we have a UV light underneath our cabinets now it's just a test you know but um, I kind of want to do some paintings for the backsplash I'm not sure if I'm do that on camera maybe show you the whole installation we will see for now I just have to practice and I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna use my um, blow dryer or just a palette knife just a palette knife um, what do you guys think what should I do I have everything uh, both I can also do both just okay confused again we had super stormy day yesterday no power um, no internet it was super cozy but I couldn't paint which sucks. Hello, Janneke. Both. See your vote. Um, I kind of think I need to, if I do both, blow dryer. Padma. Thank you. Both, Karen. Um, So if I did both, I need to start with a hairdryer, or do I? Kind of, because that's the more random tool. Oh, by the way, last week, dry. Number one, that's the one with just a plain white background and swipes on top. And this is with the faux pillow with the hide and reveal technique. Um, and this is still my favorite. It dried really good. And see that shimmer from the abalone is just so cool. And those two paintings are made with the same colors. Only one is on top of white and the other one is underneath black. Yeah. Um, I have a canvas that is 16 by 20. It's a Frederick's canvas. Um, I decided to not buy cheap canvases anymore, even for practice purposes. I feel like it's not, it's just not worth it. My grandmother used to say, I'm too, I'm too poor to buy cheap stuff. And she was a very wise woman. Uh, okay, lass mich meine Haare bändigen. And then um, I flip you over, show you my colors. So I wanted a range of... <laughs> A range of colors that is next to each other on the color wheel to get a gradient. So we start with a yellow and then work our way up to a red. 
Uh, I also went a tiny step further and did I though? Yes. And got a pink out. I might try that. The paints are all this little piggies, so they are all <laughs> pigments. And um, so those ones are usually the mica pigments are very easy to disperse and to mix up, but their fluorescent paints are not mica pigments. They are, sp you know, actually, I don't know. It must be synthetical, synthetical. Um, I don't know. Who cares? So, but they are not disperse pursing very well, meaning you have um, lots of lumps in there until they all dissolved and that can take a day or two. I just mix them up, leave them in there. And this is in, this is not Inferno. What is that? Oh, that was my canvas. Inferno is the red and oh, oh, it's techno. Techno, it's the yellow. Then I want that to kind of be on top slash below this guy. It's boogie. So that's an orange and there's still tiny lumps of not dispersed pigments in there. And I'm not quite sure what to do about it if I don't want to get out my mullet and, you know, grind the pigments. Hi, Karen. Wait, I saw your name already, but still hi. Thanks for saying hi. <laughs> okay, that was Boogie. Oh, I was wrong. That was Mosh. That was Mosh. Boogie is this guy, so it is a darker orange. So we have a light orange, a darker orange. Hi, Kathy. And then we have a red. That is Inferno. There we go. There was a lump. Yep. Or was it just a bubble? I can't find it, so it might have been just a bubble. And then this is the newest TRP. Jeez. <laughs> Keep kicking my canvas. Um, red is the name of this red. So this is really cool. I would like to try that out in a regular pour because it's, it's yummy. It's very deep and you can barely find deep reds and most of them don't really, well, they don't really satisfy me because they mix with the white pillow paint into a pink, which I want a red, not a pink, if I want red, because I don't want pink. Never mind. let's put that away, see how it is. Okay, and then the bonus, that's not a TLP, that is the only fluorescent I have in a jar, and that is fluorescent magenta nova color. Um, I used that brand in my last video. Um, two blues that are really pretty together. No, aus Kassel? Warte mal, komm zurück. Steffi Albrecht, kenne ich dich? Ich kenne dich nicht, oder? Ähm, Kassel, wenn du einen Tätowierer brauchst, geht zu Mario Goldruß Atelier, okay? Okay. Um, let me show you that guy. Sorry, guys. Um, you know, I might live in America, but my heart is still in Germany. 
So this is my magenta. I'm not sure if I will use that guy. I probably will, because if I flip you around and you see my color choices, that might make it even more pop. Hi, Madeleine. Sweden. That's on my bucket list for sure. I just got two big um, bars of mar marabou salted licorice chocolate. No, mm from Sweden. That's why I'm talking about it. Okay. Thing is, when you buy it, you can buy it here on Amazon, but then you pay like $30 for a bar of chocolate. They are big chocolate bars, but um, not bar, that's the wrong word. When you have a whole, a chocolate bar is a candy bar, right? And ch nah, never mind, it doesn't matter. <gasps> oh, Steffi! Yeah, we can uns. Dann kennst du auch den Mario. <laughs> Oh, wie geil ist das denn? Okay, so, sorry guys for talking to people. Steffi Albrecht. I know her. Um, where was I? Oh, flipping you over so we can paint. <laughs> okay, um, I have to press this button. But first, I have to stand on my two gallons of paint so I'm big enough. Okay, flipping you over. That's my ceiling. And this is my spinner and my paints. I have to go. Oops, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Stop apologizing. There we go. Okay, so see what I mean? These are, th there's not a lot of difference in those colors, so that we won't have a lot of um, contrast. Um, so we might get some with this guy. I'll, I'll, oh, you know what? Oh. I also have some Cunac here, which is not Cunac, it's the Sennelier version of it. Let me get this out of the survey. Okay, 16 by 20. It's a Frederick's canvas. Oh, I said that already. Um, so this is not a super expensive one, but it's also not a cheap canvas. The um, reason I will stop buying cheap canvases is the framing is really bad um, on most of them. Like they, they can warp. They can. Um, they are really um, tight. And this, you can just tell that was a person <laughs> putting those things in um, staples. Um, what else? So this. I want to, if I can, re-pour my paintings and um, I messed it up big time. Um, I take the canvas off the frame and re-canvases, no, re-stretch it. Um, so I have a roll of canvas and then I just do what that person did and I keep Sometimes I keep my canvas, which is the fabric part with a painting on it, and sometimes I don't. But the better the frame is underneath, the more often you can do that. I can also, I, with big pieces too, I sometimes just I take the painting off of the frame and then ship it that way. And then the person can have it stretched over a frame themselves again if they want to. Long story short, let's paint. 
Um, let me just real quick have a sip of tea and then check what you guys are up to. Kassel, kannst du nicht glauben? Block of chocolate. Thanks, Kathy. <laughs> uh, hi, Bonnie. Hello, Frido. Sheldon, hi. Hello, Joyce. I'm so glad you all came. Hello, Rebecca Niemeyer. Yeah? Jacqueline Lulu, hi. Okay. Um, yeah. Hello, Wisconsin. Bonjour, Philippe. <laughs> Emma. Okay, everybody, I probably missed some people. I couldn't see any questions. Just see you guys. Okay, zip of tea. Mm -hmm. I will hide and reveal and try to not go overboard. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so here is, I showed you all my colors. Um, I will put my white on, put my colors on, and then I will top everything with this yummy, yummy black. So this is mixed exactly the same way as those colors are. So this is not different. This is not cell activator. This is just paint like all my other paints too. Um, just way more of it. And it's not, it's not much thinner. It is, I do add a little bit of a liquid acrylic to it to make it more black. Blacker, you know what I mean to uh, make sure that the colors from underneath won't shine through. So I have a video do neons from a few months back, but um, I was not happy with that one because my black was not black enough. Um, maybe black enough, but it was too transparent, which means there was not enough pigments in there to make it opaque. Whew. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> where was I? Okay, um, I'll just check in your comments. I try to do that more often because I keep missing what you guys are saying. Okay, no. This is my Glidden Essentials. This is wall paint that is usually covered with crap and then falls into my painting. That's a normal thing. I'm used to it. <laughs> so that's the PPG Multipro. Um, the number is 473110. Interior paint. It's the white and pastel base and eggshell. And I can use it just straight out of the can. I'm lucky that way. There's people who can't because all those ingredients are different in other parts of the country or even in different countries. So the consistency can be different. Even the color can be a little bit different. Um, Okay, that was probably too much because, um, yeah, that was too much. I can tell. Oh, well. Um, let me see. Uh, because I will add way more paints on top of this and then you know, my good old problem, I have to um, spin way more than I want to, but I will leave it this way. I can still take some off once I see it's way too much, I can take the sides off. Okay, let me get a spreader. Uh, get a big one. So those are Bondo spreaders. They are made for 
car restoration and stuff to do fiberglass stuff and this one is really really messy doesn't matter it's all dry paint okay so I use a small they come in um, sets with three different sizes so there's the smaller there's the medium one and there's a bigger one doesn't cost that much either but um, I would recommend going for the bondo kind um, I don't know if there's other um, good ones out there the no-name ones are usually bad because they warp and lose their shape all that okay this is my Woohoo! What's it called? Yellow. Techno. Techno. I dipped this in my white and um, I'll make sure that I wipe that off completely. There we go. Okay, let's keep going with the uh, lighter orange there was one that needed a little bit more see that this one <laughs> sorry I have to put some varnish in that one just to make it a little bit thinner in consistency and the easiest and fastest way is adding some varnish that dries clear so it won't dilute my paint that much. So most of this dents here are bubbles. At least I hope so. <laughs> so I try to disperse them in alcohol and in all kinds of stuff to make it easier. If you guys know a trick how to correctly disperse those fluorescent paints, please let me know. I want to go the easiest way, please. Because <laughs> I'm not lazy, but effective. had to move because I saw that black little spot running down my spreader but I didn't want it on my canvas so I tend to use way too much paint I found um, okay this is my boogie that is a little too thick too. And it's that easy. Okay. That was definitely a booger. And I lost it again. There it is. Okay. I'm not really want bubbles in this uh, I just don't look that great unless you pop them but I do miss a lot of them and then you get craters when they dry or you can get um, Laufnasen hätte ich was gesagt um, you get so when you, there's, for example, is a bubble. If I move my canvas, the, the bubble moves slower than the paint that surrounds it. And you can always get a trace um, that might not be very pretty. This is Inferno. Oops. That was a lot Inferno. Oh, sh oh blah. <laughs> Just... I have some cleaning up to do. Let's put it that way. <laughs> oh, 
it's the wind. Wind makes me really scattered. Maybe I'm just a scatterish person. Actually, I'm not. Okay, I have to clean a little bit. Because <laughs> the inferno is everywhere now. Okay, that's it for inferno for today. A little is left. Okay, this is red. Oh, I love that one. It's really deep and I um, also want to see it in UV light. Oh, I need that. Makes me think I need to get one so I can show you the right results next week. Okay. Let's say that is enough. Um, do I want to use that magenta on top? I think I do. I think I do. Oh, I hope that's not a mistake. I'm a little bit... Hmm. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Cindy. Okay. It's really hard to read your comments when I'm painting. Sorry. Um, might need somebody to... in my ear or something. Okay, not sure if that was a great idea, but we will see. Isn't that pretty? All right, let's get to my bigger spreader. <laughs> this one? Yes. <laughs> Sometimes you get the best patterns on the mat. Um, um, I hate to be... So, <laughs> this is all semi-dry paint. So it's dry here. And those um, mats are just so awesome. You can just peel the paint off when it's dry. Um, and it's usually for me just a thin little... Oh, now I started and I can't stop. Okay, stop it. Um, what I was getting at was I usually um, pick up all my drippings, put them in the container, reuse them. And that brings the paint that stays on the mat to a really thin layer. And usually the next day it's dry and I can just peel it off and it's all clean. Um, what I hate about this scenario, because it was so wet out and, and nothing, home humidity is really high so things don't dry as fast. Um, I can't clean my table and now I have semi-dry paint, which means that I can't pick up everything that floats off of my canvas today. So I hate doing that, but it is what it is. Let me pop some bubbles. Oh, that's... Okay, no, 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 no. Easy. It looks way better when you pop them when you have the black on already. Okay, so... This is the black that is just mixed like all my other colors. And I put a ton of it on it. A ton of it on it. <laughs> the reason is um, you want to spread the paint out a lot. And if I put just a tiny bit of paint on my spreader, then um, for one, the mass is not big enough to give it the <laughs> weight it needs to float off the spreader. Does, does that make sense? So if I just put a little bit on... Okay, now it's not... Now it's not working because it's covered in paint already. Um, if your paint doesn't run off your tool fast, or enough, then you probably did not put enough paint on it. 
And even if you put too much, like more paint on it than you need, you don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to use it all. You can stop in the middle. You can move faster. See that? That was a bad, bad example. But the faster you move, the less paint will roll off the tool. Physics, science and stuff. I know not everybody believes in that, but there are things that you can't deny. Okay, let me fix that one corner here. So what I do is get all the paints back, paint back in my container so I can reuse it. And then um, I just put a little bit on. A little bit, but still enough so it runs quickly. Kiza. I just said Kiza. <laughs> Which is short for O oh, Kiza. All right. Already black fingers. Cool thing is, I can see if I look from the side, I can see where my paints are. I cannot always do that. So they're in this part. I will start with popping bubbles because there are some big ones there and I love when that happens. Suddenly you have a pink, oh I don't like it when they're white. That's a reason why, so in theory I, it would be okay to have my colors just in this little part over here, but way smaller, way less paints. And why I use more than I probably would need is even on the outer edges, you get those popped bubbles that have those cool colors. That's the reason why. And if there was no paint underneath, you have the white ones. See that there, there. Okay. Um, cell activator. Excuse me. I have a white one. Oh, no, that's not it though. Sorry. I have a white one. That's just Amsterdam paint. And Australian Floatrol, one to one, approximately, because I do not really measure. Um, Lynn, it's um, 16 by 20. <laughs> Thanks, Bill, and hi. Okay. Hi, Jeanette. Hello, Nick. Do you plan on going back to swipe and drag, hide and reveal pieces at all? Yeah, hell yeah. Why not? I mean, it's a, it's a work in progress. You always turn, take turns, but come back at the same spot you were before, just with way more knowledge. I have to branch out. I don't, actually, I do not understand. There's a lot of successful people on YouTube that do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. And I, good for them for making it work and having fun with it, but that's just not me. I get bored super easily. And if I figured out one thing, there's a new thing that I need to figure out. And it, it, I just, 
I, <laughs> I just can't do the whole, the, the, you know, but, but the people, when I used to do just the negative space stuff, people were sad, but other people liked it, not seeing the same stuff over and over again. It's just, you know, I do, I do what I can to make everybody happy, but um, mostly I try to make myself happy because if I was not happy, I could not make anybody else happy. There you have it. Um, here's my white. And I will start with a palette knife. And then maybe add a blow after, but I'm curious. And also I wanna, hmm. So if I swiped first and have a blow, maybe actually I should have a blow first. What do you think? I think I said that before. That would make way more sense. In that case, I'm going to get out my gold cell activator, which is in this case also Amsterdam paint and Australian Floatrol. So see how I have way more space over here. So it's very easy with a blow dryer to make things happen in that direction and cover it with a black. Let me start. With that and I will add just my gold right here. I'm getting the hair dryer and blow it. Oh, am I though? <laughs> Excuse me, I just need power. There we go. like that and then let me grab some of this gold here with my palette knife and there's already white underneath Ooh. oh and then also like last week I did the hide and reveal if you follow me, you will you will see me do it a lot. Um, I'm also gonna teach that in Asheville. Most of you probably know. In May next year, I have two classes. One is already sold out. Um, two classes of the hide and reveal and then negative space, introduction class, in case you just want to see the consistency and how it's mixed and why it's working, that kind of stuff. Okay, that's kind of cool. Um, interesting what happened with the gold here. If that is the gold, I can't really tell. We will see once I spin it out. Okay, let me add another heap of gold. Here we go. And I'm gonna, because I know my paint is just here, it wouldn't make sense to swipe over there. Unfortunately, <laughs> nothing unfortunately, everything is cool. Um, looks like a butterfly here. Um, I want to go in here because this shape is just weird and once I spin 
it will grow. And then we have something weird looking, very big. All this kind of stuff is just experience and having seen it before. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was a little worried how um, I usually never use just pigments because they lack of binder and they are not very um, stretchy. Is that the word I'm looking for? Oh, there's the red coming out. I love that red. Red. Okay. I'm not quite sure if that's the thing I wanted, but definitely we need some negative space. Otherwise, this will be just super overwhelming. Super overwhelming. <laughs> okay, let me get some gloves. thinking. Okay, I will get some of the paint off. So I have my my um, container of used pillow paint and um, I'm just scraping the outer edges off. For one, I would not be able to pick them up off my table because of the semi-dry paint underneath. And every time you pick your paint up and move it around, no matter how you get the scrape the paint off your table, you will get air bubbles. And I think this way it might be less air bubbles. I just hope so. <laughs> I think it is. Um, Not sure. Okay, so a few things that I'm looking for right now. One is this bald spot here. So to get rid of this, which I want, um, you know, I need to go this way, which brings my composition here fairly close to that corner. And um, at this point, I can still figure out if I want that or not. There is things that I can do, for example, just put black on this. Um, I could just go for it too. <laughs> Um, not sure what I want to do. Fact is that I have to tilt, if I tilt this off, this will be gone too. So I think I go with a black on top and I can still change my mind and tilt, but at least I'm not tied to doing it. Does that make sense? I like options. <laughs> Having options is a good thing. Then you don't have to decide right away because most people have problems with that. I do. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna give it a baby spin. And then while I spin, I watch my comp. Oh, <laughs> that's cool. Sorry. <laughs> um, 
So while I spin, I watch my composition, where it goes, and I try to stop it before it reaches the corner, because the corner anchor it down. If I, like here, I, this red tail here, I'm not sure if that's, if you can see it, I think you can. This will stay there from now on. There's enough paint though that I can, if I tilted it this way, this will go this way. Um, but the less paint is on here, the less you can move your composition. And especially if it is anchored down. Okay, so... I move this more towards the middle. I think eventually I want to go down there. This looks so cool. Um, I want to go down there to just lose this. I mean, this is not, I can go over with black paint after. Wouldn't be a problem. Um, where was I? So yeah, I want to go this way at one point. I kind of liked this tail here but I will lose that one. I will definitely go this direction to save this. I don't want this to touch my corner. So let's start with, oopsie, that. I'm glad I saved some of that pillow paint. A lot of paint on here. All right, so can you see those speckles there? That is popped paint bubbles. That's, uh, yeah, that gives it a very spacey feel usually. Um, let's go a little bit more that direction. It's not that I'm super fond of doing that, but I kind of have to. Oh my God, that looks so cool. Okay, that's it. Just um, oh. adding some white with my finger. That was not the plan. Okay, so this is a little. Hmm. I might have to get a torch in here for this technique. Um, just the amount of bubbles is kind of kind of a lot. So there's still a lot of paint on here. I just want to get rid of the big white speckles here. They irritate me a little bit. And this will go. Still a lot of bubbles over here. Away with you, white. Go away. Oh my god, I watched. You probably don't know who Steffi Graf is, but. She's a tennis player from the 90s. She was like generation John McEnroe, Andre Agassi. She actually married and Andre Agassi. That's why I think she's a badass. Because I was kind of... Kind of had a crush on Andre Agassi. <laughs> Am I talking too much? I should not say these things. But I watched the pickleball slam <laughs> yesterday. And it was Steffi Graf. And Andre Agassi against John McEnroe and I think his spouse. It was just so fun to watch. <sighs> okay, I shut up now. Um, baby spin. That was a baby spin. Um, paint is still moving a lot. Um, too bad because I like it 
the way it is right now. It has it has a good balance, which is one third composition, two thirds negative space, ish. Um, too much paint on it though. And I already got rid of some. Let me check. Oh, it's not too bad. So this is like an eighth of an inch. We have to get rid of some. Oh, hey, Stacy. <laughs> yeah, I loved Steffi Graf. She's, she was, a I, a, I won't say a big influence, but I was never sporty. I wasn't, but she was, just there was some stuff going on with her dad who screwed her over with taxes and stuff and just the way she handled it and the way she recovered from it was very impressive. I, I love when people just know to do the right thing. Okay, let's push this. See how fast that still moves. Um, let me move it a little more and then tell you about my options here. So I do have to get rid of paint. Reason is I want it to dry well. I don't want it to, I want it to dry the way I see it when I leave the room. And usually it doesn't do that when you leave too much paint on because just the paint has the opportunity to move because there's a lot on there. Um, yeah, it moves a lot, huh? Down. Um, what did I just say I'm going to do? Tell you my options. Okay, so I moved it this way. What it means is since this paint here is anchored down, I know I'm sometimes using weird words, but it's, you know, I'm not a native English speaker. I don't know if you can tell. So, this will stay there and it got thinner, less, less intense and saturated by me pushing it this way. So I will definitely go back to cover this up, which gives me something to work with. So I lost a little bit of paint going this direction. And um, actually, when I edit my videos, sorry, I will go back this direction to get rid of this orange guy. I do like it, but it, I have to get rid of something and that's what it is. Um, I wanted to say something. Forgot it. I knew the moment I started talking about the orange blob. I'm gonna lose what I was gonna say. Can't be that important then. Okay, so now I'm going back to get rid of my mushy bushy whooshy thing and to have my composition back. The I'm not sure. Okay, so I will spin again. With the spin, I will probably lose this. I will go closer to this. I might lose these stretch marks here and those. So that's what I'm going to do. Wish me luck. And stop it right away. <laughs> I kind of like the stretch marks now. All right, so I lost some of this. Lost some of this. This is getting very close to the edge, but maybe that is what I need to do. So to 
visualize things, I always use my hand and block parts off. That makes it easier for my brain to understand how it would look like if I stretched this direction and made this here longer, anchor it down here. Does that make sense? So with my having my hand there, it's not black there anymore and I can kind of tell how it might look. Just just plain composition wise. Oh, hi, Garrick. I'm so glad you made it. Hi, Cos. Oh, I'm so happy you're here. I get to see you soon. I'm so excited. Everybody, come to Asheville, see us. Learn from us, paint with us, hang with us. It's going to be fun. I love these events so much. I love all the people. Ah, not only the students, also the teachers. Some of them are nice. <laughs> okay, so I did like that. And I like it better going this direction than going that direction. I kind of like this little tail thing here. And, you know, it's starting to move slower so I might not I might not have to get this all the way off so I'm going back just so I have a little bit of air to spin it again so what do you think about the composition, guys? Am I being... <laughs> do I have an eye fart? Or is that... Okay. can find the middle. Because a little bit, I think... Hmm, here's my problem. This is so dominant here. I probably have enough paint to get rid of all of this. But if I did that, this will stretch out and get more transparent. And then I have something going on up here. Um, that's the fun part with fluid art. Because there's just things that you cannot 100% predict. <laughs> oh, really? And then I just let coincidence happen. Let me check again how much paint there's left. I usually go for the middle. Ah, oh, there's still a bunch in there. <laughs> I haven't lost a lot. That's great, Stacy. Are you coming? That'd be cool. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, reading your... Okay, it still looks like an octopus. Oh! Okay, maybe lose a little from the bottom. Is the bottom this to you? And leave the stretch marks. Yeah, I can see that. It is. Hmm, maybe I go this way. It's just the middle that moves a lot. And the middle is part that will get wonky when there's not enough paint off. When there's not enough paint tilted off. <laughs> Um, you know, it might look, you know what, I'm going this direction. Maybe this will get a little bit longer and kind of go into nothingness. Because I do like the shape of that yellow thing. It's just so dominant. Oh. Okay, there's one thing that happens right now. 
there's a lot of paint right here and you see it's getting muddy that's because it's a lot of paint um, usually that happens with thin paint uh, we're pretty lucky with this technique to not get mud because it is such thick paint so I have my little pipette here um, that's not enough paint I should have done that earlier so cell activators though are thinner which means they move faster and um, if you have a puddle of cell activator that you haven't moved enough they usually puddle up somewhere and can't go anywhere and then when you tilt they the puddle of cell activator just floats in one direction that is unfortunate but i like what i did there i think that was a good idea i will give it one more spin Yep, I kind of like it without the, hmm, do I know? <laughs> well, for me, I, it's, it's hard to tell what's more important. <laughs> I think if the balance is off in a painting, that's the worst thing that can happen. And there is a rule of thumb with negative space, you want a ratio of two thirds and one third either way. So I either have one third negative space and the rest is color or the other way around. And right now, I in the beginning I was one third paint. Oh, this starts looking great. Oh my god. Um, no, oh, okay. I'm gonna spin again. <laughs> Sometimes the spin just reveals all the colors. Um, so right now, yeah, I'm, I switched to having one third of negative space and two thirds of composition, and I do not mind it at all. Maybe I go a little bit down here. I really like that black part here. I might lose that. That's what you get. I'm using too much paint. You even scale it down. I don't know if I ever learn. Yep. Okay, that's it. I really like the the paint shining through the reds shining through there. This part is awesome. Okay, I'm gonna let you judge yourself and get you down. First I will clean the edges so it won't pull my composition down the edges. I totally lost my little tail there that's fine and i think this is hmm do you want to lose more of that white uh, yellow let's be honest it's still very distracting isn't it good thing is i can always paint over it okay let's Let's have destiny decide it. I check how much paint there is left. Still, so this is one six, the heavy 16th, which is two millimeters. I could get away with spinning one more time. And since I lost that part anyway, I'm gonna lose that black part. 
I'm just going to do it. I'm telling you, it's, it's better to spin more than you want it to than dry your painting and having cracks or a different composition the next morning. That to me is more sad. <laughs> Something is starting to flocculate right there. Hmm, what's that? And why? Could be the gold cell activator that sometimes does it. I think that's better. Okay. Okay, guys, make up your mind. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it this way. Let me get my glove off. Oops. I made a mess today. Hi and welcome, Rose. I'm, um, I'm always happy for input. And um, I always wanted to do another one. My last one's failed badly. Okay, let's see. Yes, Lynn, I did. Okay, so here we are. So this is the part where my cell activator puddled up and made a mess. Mm, it's the gold cell activator, definitely. Look what's happening there. Can you see that? It's like moving upwards. Okay, this is definitely one of my favorite spots right there. That's the inferno. Is it though? I think it is. Love that swipe. And then this happened because some of the pill paint must have mixed in. But look at that little red cell there. Oh, that was so cute. And this one, this whole part is actually what I was going for, having the gradients see this. That's the kind of gradient that I actually wanted to achieve. Well, maybe next time. Um, but man, the glow of this is awesome. And the red is, I think I need to use that as my regular red. I don't think it turns pink, maybe a little bit there's some pink, but I'm not sure if that's the Inferno or the red. Um, this is the typical hide and reveal um, look. Like you have a lot of that black and then you have those colors glow from behind. All right. Let me maybe, there's my gradients again. I think it was the gold cell activator that is kind of losing it here too. Oh well, now I know. Flipping you over. Putting you back into my thing. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. That was fun. I might do another one. And then um, Friday, new video. I'll be featuring at Nate's Art Lab. If you all know Nate Bright, um, he has a patron. So do I, by the way. And he does, uh, he does monthly videos with his patrons and invites a guest this month it's me and we're doing palette knife 
stuff. Um, so that will be on the 11th. Friday, another video. Monday, I'll be live again. Check out fluidartexperience.com for May event. Um, awesome people are going to be there. And we're going to teach, going to have fun. And you can sign up for classes. I have two hide and reveal classes. One is already sold out and there's just a few spots left on the second one. Um, but the other classes are still open. All right. I love you guys. Thanks for being here. Bye-bye.